I'm Corey and just in time for Halloween, here are my top 20 South Korean horror films. Let's start the list with a film from 2013, Killer Toon. A webcomic artist becomes the prime suspect in two deaths when her drawings depict the crime scenes down to the last detail. I really enjoy this movie for its clever use of comic book art and unique scene transitions. So it's full of great visuals and it has a good performance by its lead, Lee Si Young. <laughs> Into the Mirror is one of those films that capitalised on the Asian horror boom of the early 2000s. An ex-cop, now working as a security guard in a shopping mall, tries to uncover the secret behind a series of mysterious deaths linked to mirrors. At the time, the film was considered one of the breakout K-horror films, and it might seem a little dated, but it's still very much enjoyable. Also, the movie was remade by French filmmaker Alexandra Aja in 2008. Can you guess how that turned out? Chore or Chores is a 2009 Korean horror comedy about a giant boar on the loose in a small country town. The film is pretty much a homage to Spielberg's classic Jaws, with a little razorback thrown in for good measure. This film is equal parts funny as it is scary, and it also has some decent special effects. Overall, I would say if you like the film Lake Placid, then Chore is the perfect film to screen with that as a double feature. Have you ever worked in an office and wanted to murder your co-workers? Well, Koa Sung, star of Bong Joon-ho's The Host and Snowpiercer, headlines this Korean slasher film about a man disliked by his colleagues who suddenly murders his entire family. When the investigating detective realises that the killer entered his workplace after the slayings but never exited, he suspects the man may be hiding in his office and his co-workers are next. Ko Ah Sung is great in this film, as she always is, and the plot will keep you guessing until the very end. The most recent film on this list is The Mimic, not to be confused with the Guillermo del Toro film from the late 90s. The film follows the mysterious story of the Jang Sun Tiger, which mimics human voice to enchant people, leading them to their deaths. I reviewed this film recently and found that it had some very intense and genuinely frightening sequences. If you're looking for something a little similar to The Wailing, then this film is for you. <coughs> Much like another film on this list, Into the Mirror, Phone was one of the films that elevated K-horror. Soon after ji Wong gets a new cell phone, her friend's young daughter puts it to her ear and immediately begins screaming in terror. When other strange things start happening in connection with the phone, ji Wong does some investigating and discovers that of the people before her who had the same number, almost all of them died suddenly under unusual circumstances. This film stars the ever-reliable Ha ji Wong in an early lead role. Ah! 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 
Tua nada de tua transmissão. Mara Brabo! The next title on this list started a film series that began almost 20 years ago. Jesus, that makes me feel old. Whispering Corridors is a 1998 horror film about ghosts in an all-girls school. I'm being a little cheeky here and I'm kinda recommending this series as a whole. There are a total of five of them, this being the first and the best of the bunch in my opinion. The other titles in this series include Memento Mori, Wishing Stairs, voice, and a blood pledge. Another horror comedy makes the list with Kim Ji Woon's The Quiet Family. The film is notable for its impressive cast, including early performances by Choi Min Shik and Song Kang Ho. The plot revolves around a family that opens up a mountain inn where their first guest commits suicide. Suddenly, all their guests befall horrible fates. This is a great horror comedy from one of South Korea's best directors. Black House is a 2007 Korean adaptation of a Japanese novel with the same name. An insurance claims agent faces off with a client whom he suspects of committing murders with the intention of collecting insurance premiums. The film stars Hwang Jung Min in the lead role and as always, he is great. He's such a fantastic leading man. I love him and everything he does. This is a really good horror film and there was a Japanese version released in 1999, but this is one of those rare instances where the Korean version is better than the original. <laughs> Next up we have Cinderella, a film that takes a dark look at South Korea's obsession with plastic surgery by addressing the issue through body horror and dark satirical themes and imagery. The film is about the daughter of a plastic surgeon who experiences strange events that seem to be connected with her childhood. What I love about this film is its underlying social commentary to the issue of Korea's extreme preoccupation with beauty and achieving it through plastic surgery. In my opinion, Cinderella is a unique and very underrated horror film. <laughs> Based on the classic story The Pied Piper of Hamelin, this underappreciated and underseen K-horror film offers a unique spin on the folktale in a way that only Koreans can. Shortly after the Korean War, a father and son are wandering through the country and make a stop in a remote village where strange and dangerous happenings occur. Please don't let the US DVD cover put you off this film. It really misrepresents it, trust me. Living Death, also known as Possessed, is a fantastic gem of a Korean horror film, and more people need to watch it. The movie is about a college student named Hee Jin, who returns home when her 14-year-old sister So Jin goes missing. Her mother, a fanatic churchgoer, resorts to prayer rather than working with the police to find So Jin. Meanwhile, Hee Jin hears rumours that her sister has been possessed. The film stars Shimon Kyun from Fabricated City and The Mayor, and it's totally worth checking out if you like possession films like The Wailing, as it is similar in tone to that film. <laughs>
Directed by Park Chan-wook and based on the French novel by Emile Zola, first stars Song Kang-ho as a priest working for a hospital who selflessly volunteers for a secret vaccine. However, during this process, he nearly dies, but makes a miraculous recovery by an accidental transfusion of vampire blood. As you all know, Song Kang-ho is one of my favourite actors, and we get to see a little bit more of him in this than usual. It also stars Kim Ok Vin, who was in The Villainess this year, which is worth checking out as well. Our Point is one of those rare, genre-bending Korean horror films. Not only is it a film about the perils of the Vietnam War, but it's also a terrifying story about cursed spirits. During the Vietnam War, a South Korean base receives a radio transmission from a squad that they have presumed are dead. The army decides to send a platoon to rescue the lost squad from a place known as the R Point. Like many of the best K-horror films, the fear in our point comes from what you don't see. I highly recommend this movie. <laughs> Have you watched Train to Busan recently and you're still hungry for more? Well, in my opinion, Flu is the closest thing you're going to get. This horror disaster movie tackles some deep social issues such as illegal immigration and trusting your government. Chaos ensues when a lethal airborne virus infects the population of a South Korean city less than 20 kilometers from Seoul. I discovered this film after watching Train to Busan. I purchased it on DVD and I'm so glad I did. Trust me, if you like Train to Busan, you will love this movie. It has some stunning visuals as well as a very impressive cast. <laughs> In my opinion, Spider Forest is a film that deserves a cult following. This Kafka-esque or David Lynchian style story is one I revisited recently and I have to say it is arguably the most unique film on this list. Here's the setup. A man wakes in the forest, discovers the mutilated corpses of co-workers in a house, and pursues a man he believes to be the killer. Unlike a lot of films, Spider Forest manages to avoid most of the modern horror conventions, including scary pale children, and it does not rely on special effects to set the mood. Instead, the psychological predicament of the main character creates an atmosphere of blurred confusion and distrust in one's own memory. The second Kim Ji Woon film on this list, and one of his best movies, is A Tale of Two Sisters, a supernatural horror film inspired by an ancient Korean folktale. Set in an isolated lakeside house, the story is about two young girls returning home after a period of hospitalization following the death of their mother. In the meantime, their father has remarried to a woman they cannot stand. This film is strange, it's violent, it's disturbing, it's a thing of beauty. It totally deserves its spot on this list and you need to watch it. Pan's Labyrinth and The Orphanage are considered by most to be two of the best Spanish language horror films ever made. In 2007, South Korea gave Spanish language horror a run for its money 
with Hansel and Gretel based on the classic Grimm Brothers fairy tale. After meeting a mysterious girl on a dark stretch of road, a young salesman is invited to a beautiful house with bizarre secrets and no way to escape. This film has some absolutely stunning visuals and I truly believe that it should be studied by any student of film. Hansel and Gretel is an incredibly layered and masterfully put together horror film. Twenty sixteen was a fantastic year for South Korean cinema and probably the best year for South Korean horror. Train to Busan is the live action debut of animation director Yeon Sang Ho. The premise is simple. A man, his daughter and other passengers become trapped on a speeding train during a zombie outbreak in South Korea. The film is absolutely terrifying and a roller coaster ride of horror that never stops. Truth be told, I've never been the biggest fan of zombie movies, but after watching Train to Busan, I was converted. This is easily one of the best zombie films of all time. Na Hong Jin is a director with a perfect record. His debut film The Chaser is one of the best serial killer films ever made. His second film The Yellow Sea, one of the best thrillers ever made. And now The Wailing, the best Korean horror film ever made. A Japanese stranger arrives in a small Korean village and soon after a mysterious illness starts spreading. A policeman is drawn into the incident and is forced to solve the mystery in order to save his only daughter. What Na Hong Jin does so well with this film is he weaves an intricate turn of events by using religious symbols to evoke fear and terror from the viewer. This is a one of a kind South Korean horror film that could go up against The Exorcist as the best possession film ever made. Guys, there you have it. Just in time for Halloween, my top 20 South Korean horror films. Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you watch some of these films. I hope they scare you and I hope you have a fantastic time. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you're new to my channel. Remember to like and share this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you very soon.